Hello, family, friends, and fellow sojourners. The story I'm about to tell you um, is another miracle. It's um, a sad event, but um, God in his mercy and loving kindness um, allowed me to see something that I think was very, very important. And it had to do with today being the fifth anniversary of my great niece's death. Um, I think she just barely turned six when she passed away. Um, she was surrounded by her father and her grandparents, one of which um, the her grandmother was my half sister with my husband, my birth father's second family. And her oldest um, her older sister, Diana's older sister Debbie and her husband, knew that um, Alizé was going to pass away, so they drove all the way to, uh, from Grand Junction to be by Alizé's side when she took her last breath. It was very, very hard. Um, but um, when I found out, it was a fluke that I found out. It had to do with my bumping into my nephew who worked at a, a gym. And my sisters and I had gone there to work out together. And um, I said, how are you doing, Rich? And he said, uh, I had heard that he worked there. And he says, I'm doing fine. He said, but we've had a loss. And I said, what loss? And he said, Alizé passed away uh, late last night. And um, I was very distraught because I knew how close that little girl was. Uh, to her grandmother and grandfather. She had basically lived with them from the time she was a little baby. She and her father lived um, with them, and uh, Diana took care of her, um, and she doted on her, as did her husband, and uh, they just loved her. And when I found out that she had passed away, she had a tumor in, in the base of her skull that was impacting her walk, and she was sent to Children's Hospital in Denver the first time I ever met her. Um, which is sad to, to know that I had never met my great niece. Um, but I'd gone to the hospital and um, she was in bad shape then, but they treated her and sent her home and she was doing better. But a year later she passed away. So um, I had just made a, a chicken casserole. It was ready to put in the oven that evening. And I immediately drove back to the house and told my sisters, I'm going to Pueblo to go be with Diana to support her. And um, so they decided to go with me. So I picked up the casserole and the eggs. We drove down to, to Pueblo. And when we got there, um, we noticed that our sister Diana was out in the grass talking to a man. And we didn't know what the discussion was, but they were really absolutely deeply involved in this conversation. So we walked around kind of awkward. Um, Debbie was there. Um, she's a sweet, sweet, sister and she loves the Lord and she was there and so we were talking to her and I thought oh I better move my car because I'd parked in their front yard and I need to move the car and bring the eggs into the house so as I'm walking across the street or, or I I actually had moved the car earlier but I remembered I had the eggs so I walked across the street and I noticed there was a dead ladybug at least I thought it was dead lying on its back with his little legs all curled up. And I thought, well, that's odd to, to see a dead ladybug this time of year and didn't give it much thought. Went to the car and as I was walking past um, this little ladybug, the Lord told me to pick up the ladybug. And I thought, you want me to pick up a dead ladybug? What in the world's that all about? But I did, I learned I better trust, um, when the Lord tells me to do something, I better do it. So I did. I picked it up and I held it in my hand and Diana continued to talk to this man. I walked around with this dead ladybug in my hand and when she was through, I, um, I said to her, I gave her a hug, of course, and I said, I have something that the Lord wants me to give to you. And uh, she held out her hand and I, I took my hand like this and I placed it in and very carefully scraped that ladybug in her hand. And do you know that that little ba ladybug started crawling around her hand, all over her hand, didn't fly away, just crawled all over her hand. And um, I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, and, I, and I told her, I said, well, it's a gift from God. I said, but maybe it was Alizé's way of telling you that she's no longer suffering and that she's no longer in pain and that she's in a better place or whatever. I said, I don't understand 
you know, how God works in these situations. I just know that I was, I felt impressed that I need to pick that, that uh, ladybug up. I didn't tell her that it was, that I thought it was dead, but so after, um, I'm, she, and I said, did Alizé like uh, bugs? And she said, oh, she loved butterflies. And I said, did she like ladybugs? She said, I think so. Um, but she didn't act too excited about what I had given her. I'm sure she, to this day, probably um, wondered about that. But I took a couple of pictures of that little ladybug and even a movie of it crawling around her hand. And um, later on, I was talking to Debbie uh, as we were sitting in the garage, and I was telling her that I was getting ready to go see the movie The Shack. Um, and she said, oh, I want to see that movie. And I said, well, you and Diana should go. I said, I think it would do Diana some good. And um, we just got to talking about it. And um, I have to tell you, preface it by saying that I, my husband read the book and he told me that God was introduced as a woman uh, to this man who had just lost his, his daughter um, in a tragic way. She was kidnapped and murdered and he was very, very angry with God. And um, that's why he, w he went to this shack um, where the, her body had been found and instead he, he met God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Um, so anyway, I was opposed to the book, and then I was opposed to the movie until someone I really respected said, oh, you should go see this movie. Then you'll understand why God was introduced as a woman. So we went to the movie that night, and in the, in the, in the midst of this movie, I realized why this man saw God as a female was because he had a hard, hard time with his birth father and his birth father was extremely cruel to him. And um, so he couldn't understand a father's love, but he had he came closer to understanding a, a mother's love. So that's why God was introduced as a female at that point. But then in the middle of the movie or towards the end of the movie, he goes, God takes him to um, a place that appeared to be heaven and his father walked up to him and uh, asked him to forgive him for everything that he'd done to him. And, and uh, this is what this man needed to hear. He needed to hear um, that um, his father needed forgiveness and he needed to forgive him in order to get on with his life. But the thing that was astounding is that when he walked back, God was a man. And um, as he's standing on the, in, on the pathway going back to the shack, God's talking to him and ministering to him. And the man goes like this, and a ladybug lands on his hand, is walking around on his hand. And I thought about what I'd just done with Diana that morning. And um, then as I went through the movie just recently again, I, I saw that there was a ladybug throughout the theme of the movie, that the little girl loved bugs. And... Um, there was a ladybug in several scenes, uh, and, but the one that caught me was the one with he, him having that ladybug walk around in his hand. So I, to this day, don't know if, uh, if Diana has seen the movie, um, but I do know that I needed to see the movie so that God could show me his mercy. And um, I, I just thought it was miraculous, and I thought it was an interesting twist on the story. Um, and how the Lord knew I was going to go see that movie that I thought I would never go see, given the, the, the subject matter of the book. But because a friend had recommended it, I acquiesced and I went to see it. And boy, am I glad I did. So I hope that you enjoyed this story. I hope you were blessed by it. And I pray that God would minister to your needs today. God bless you, my friends. Bye-bye.